What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another Texas Chainsaw Massacre video. Today, although I only have a few updates for you, I do have some really exciting information to share, including some new details on gameplay mechanics. But let's start first by taking a look at a new teaser image that was released by Gun Interactive CEO Wes Keltner that doesn't show much, but is exciting nonetheless. This new image simply shows the booty of one of our survivor characters within the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. For those that don't know, Wes had a lot to do with the butt designs within Friday the 13th the game, and it's good to see that his role has transferred over to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Like I said, this image isn't much, but it's still cool to see at least a portion of one of the survivor characters. Now let's take a look at the subreddit where a few more details were revealed, starting with some information surrounding the combat system. Will you be able to kill the Slaughter family? The family cannot be killed in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. While being careful not to share too much, let me just say that the victims are in no way in a position to put up that type of fight against the family. Now, there will be ways for the victims to defend themselves. However, engaging in full-on combat with the family is not something that the victims can readily do. While I cannot reveal much more than that, I can say the game is simply not structured like that. Combat is the last option to the victims, as it only makes sense out of sheer desperation rather than as a viable tactic. For me, I'm really excited to hear this. You know, combat within Friday the 13th of the game was something that at many times just got out of hand. I mean, with counselors consistently having the upper hand on Jason. With the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the Slaughter family at the end of the day are just deranged, not supernatural humans. The ability to fight back in excessive ways could lead to something that wouldn't be very true to the franchise that we know. I mean, the victims that we see in the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre are going in empty handed and really don't have sufficient weapons to fight back with. But that said, Matt does seem to be saying that there will be a way to fight back. It'll just be very limited and an absolute last resort in game. Now, next question, will each survivor have their own unique traits and stats similar to that of Friday the 13th? There are attributes similar to F13, though they will not be identical and they will also not be the entire identity of the character. In the Text Chainsaw Massacre, we have a detailed metagame still to share that will shape the playable characters immensely, with attributes being more like their baseline statistics. That said, you know we have more to share in metagame at a later date, so stay tuned. And then Matt elaborated on this just a little bit further, saying they are all unique enough at their core to differentiate them, and in no way are the victims just different skins with perks applied. More on this when we cover metagame and victims in the future. Now, Matt's elaboration here was in response to a question about Dead by Daylight, as survivors in that game all have the same speed and stats and just look physically different, while relying on perks to differentiate how they actually play. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre seems to have their own unique way of differentiating survivors, and it seems that perks in the metagame they're creating is much more important than it ever was in, like, Friday the 13th. So I'm really curious where this side of the game is heading as it's a type of metagame experience that we really haven't seen much inside of asymmetrical horror multiplayer rather than Dead by Daylight. So at the end of the day, it could be a really nice breath of fresh air and could add a lot of versatility inside of this genre. Now, last but not least, I wanted to include a couple of tweets from Wes Keltner that talks about how they are tackling DMCA issues within TCM and how they're going out of their way to try and protect streamers and content creators who will be playing the game. My legal team and I are working on a license that will be included with the EULA of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. This will grant streamers and YouTubers the right to play our game music. We will send all third-party DMCA music bot companies a copy of this license. Create change. While nothing is 100% perfect against music algorithms, it is a step in the right direction. It's an aggressive step to protect our game, players, and streamers. You know, as a content creator, I obviously very much appreciate the effort they're putting in to overcome the issues that many creators have been facing with DMCA, especially over on Twitch. This type of approach, if it goes to plan, could be the future of how developers implement music in their games. Over the course of the Friday the 13th game, I've received hundreds of copyright claims on our streams for music that is featured in the game. While this didn't affect me much because of how YouTube handles their copyright issues, this created a lot of issues for other creators and streamers, especially over on Twitch. To be able to potentially avoid those issues entirely would be a massive achievement, and I really, really hope that works out for the sake of all of us creators and game developers. 
But that's it for today. Let me know your thoughts on all this in the comments below. Would love to discuss it with you. And if you enjoyed, make sure you drop a like and subscribe for more updates like this one. And, of course, as always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.